Good morning. This is uh, Monday of Holy Week. And throughout Holy Week, the church, uh, we follow the, la the various events of Jesus as he travels uh, to Jerusalem and in Jerusalem uh, as he's on his way to the cross. And in, in this sense, the church, uh, the Christians, we accompany Jesus as his disciples. Uh, we are seeking to follow him uh, along this path. And so it's a, it's a time to just pause and meditate over some of the various events of uh, Jesus' final journey on the way to the cross. So today we uh, have a simple story. Uh, it, Jesus stops for dinner with friends at Bethany on his way to Jerusalem. So he stops to see Mary, Martha, and Lazarus three characters that we're familiar with we've seen in previous stories Lazarus has been raised from the dead in the past and so quite a miraculous story and we have other stories of Mary and Martha so Jesus these are Jesus intimate friends and so they gather for a dinner and at some point in the evening Mary breaks open a, a ointment and pours on Jesus feet and wipes his feet with her hair uh, Upon which Judas responds that this ointment, uh, it, the, the cost is so expensive that the money should have been used for the poor. But then the text points out that Judas's concern is not actually for the poor. Uh, it says that he's a thief and, and he actually regularly takes from the money bag. So he sees this as uh, taking from his own pocket. And then as the story proceeds, it says that crowds begin to gather uh, because this is because Jesus is there, but it's also where Lazarus is, and they want a glimpse of the man that Jesus raised from the dead, and they're so impacted just upon this uh, seeing Jesus and Lazarus. It says they walk away. Many walk away believing in Jesus, and then at the very end of the story, we have uh, it says the chief priests are threatened, and they plot to kill both Jesus and Lazarus, and so. Here we already have the uh, image of the cross, the tension of moving toward the cross, the upcoming uh, death of Jesus. But simultaneously, we have something both beautiful and loving uh, held against the tension of two dark aspects, both uh, Judas as stealing from the money bag and then the chief priest plotting to kill Lazarus and Jesus. So we have these tensions. So now, as we meditate on this uh, pilgrimage toward Jerusalem. We might pause over the story. There's a various ways you could uh, think about the story, but I thought one form of meditation is to uh, ask ourselves, and many of you are familiar with this, the simple question, uh, who am I in the story? Who, who am I in the story? And uh, this is a valid question because, uh, one, this the scripture reveals to us who God is in Christ. And so we have the revelation of who God is, uh, specifically in Christ Jesus, but the Old Testament is also revealing God. But simultaneously, scripture is also revealing to us who humanity is. So it's revealing who we are. As we read the stories, we see who we are. So different characters reflect aspects of who we are. Or the story of Israel reflects who humanity is. So we pause over the story. We have... Uh, we have Jesus' friends, the intimate friendship. We have Lazarus, the thief. We have the chief priests who are seeking to kill Jesus. And we might pause over each of these characters and contemplate, who are we? And uh, I, th I think most of us would want to be uh, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. We want to identify with those who love Jesus, who adore him. And, and, in, and in that sense, we are called to be those people. We are called to be those who adore him and it says that uh, when Mary uh, breaks the ointment, the aroma fills the house. And St. Augustine uh, talked about the aroma of uh, the followers of Christ, that we are both life to those who are uh, being redeemed in death, uh, a, a bad aroma of death to those who are perishing. And so, uh, of course, Augustine is talking, uh, quoting uh, St. Paul. But he sees this story already giving us that image, that Mary is a, an aroma. And so in that sense... We would want to be those who, who, who become living witnesses. Lazarus in particular is a living witness. When people see him, they see uh, 
uh, of one who God has touched profoundly, who has raised from the dead. And, and in one sense, all followers of Christ are those who have been raised back to life. We've been recalled to life in Christ. And so in that sense, we might meditate on that and pause over that, our, our, who we are as Lazarus, those who've been called to life. But we can't overlook the negative characters in the story because uh, we, we look at Judas and we will see Judas again later in the week. But in today's story, he's presented to us as a thief, as, one, as a thief who covers his uh, deeds with uh, self-righteousness. And I fear that that uh, penetrates all of us. We, we might not be thieves, but it is so easy for self-righteousness to be a cloak for our own uh, deceptiveness, our own corruption. And certainly during Holy Week, it's worth meditating on our own tendency to cover our flaws, our jealousy, our envy, our anger, our uh, whatever issues that we struggle with, to cover it with a cloak of self-righteousness as though we are the ones who are trying to preserve the truth when actually we may be the ones who are hindering the truth. So we ask the Lord to search our hearts and uh, pray that we might uh, be clear of that. And then simultaneously, we might also identify with those who are threatened by uh, by Lazarus, specifically in this story. They're threatened because Lazarus is an image of, uh, of one who has been touched by God. And so how are uh, maybe, maybe once again this image of jealousy or threat, those who have, are receiving praises or being recognized because of their witness for the Lord are, are we jealous or angry or, or threatened and the danger of being threatened, particularly in this story with power. These are people in power and uh, what areas of our own lives where uh, we are fearful of our power uh, being threatened by other people. So once again, we might ask that question. And finally, we might ask one last question, and that is, how are we following Christ in this story? So I'm going to read the collect of the day, because the collect focuses our eyes up on the disciples' identification with Christ. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So even as we pause over this story and consider ourselves disciples of Christ, we recognize that the call to follow Christ is the call to the way of the cross. And for some, that means physical, very real suffering. And for others, it means sacrifice in other ways. And so we follow Christ into the way of the cross. May the Lord give you a blessed Holy Monday uh, today.